guys, I'm Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the least powerful LS intake manifold I've ever tested. Of course, I'm talking about the LS4. In this video, we're going to take a look at a direct back-to-back -back comparison of the 5.3 liter front-wheel drive LS4 intake. And we're going to compare it to basically your run-of-the-mill 4.8, 5.3, or 6.0 truck manifold. The early one, not even the Trailblazer SS, not even the more powerful one, just your run-of-the-mill truck manifold. Little did I know after talking to my boy Brandon over at LS4 King, shout out to the LS4 King, that he told me that manifold is really not that great. Little did I know, not that great was actually overselling it. This is the least powerful factory LS manifold I have ever tested so much so that I thought something was wrong with my test motor. Let's check it out. I've also got additional information from my six liter cathedral port intake test to put all of these power gains into perspective. Okay guys, I'm finally going to test the elusive LS4 intake manifold. I thought that I had tested every factory cathedral port and really rec port intake manifold. I have videos up on both of those. I have the big cathedral port LS intake manifold chewed out up. So if you want to see how the factory truck manifold, Trailblazer SS, the LS2, LS3, or not LS3, <laughs> LS2, LS6, the Fast, the Fast 92, the Fast 102, the LSXR, all the Holly manifolds, the high rams, all of those things. I compared all of those intakes in one video, so we're going to take a look at, the, or so you guys can take a look at that. I also tested all of the available LS3 ones. The only LS3 intake manifold that I think that I didn't test that was available at the time was I never test a ported version of the factory LS3, which I would like to, because if you take a look at all of those videos I have up, I have both carbureted and EFI versions of the LS3 uh, videos up and the interesting thing is the factory LS3 manifold works very well and if you're looking at a cathedral manifold the fast manifold kind of is the go-to manifold and we're going to take a look at that but I had never tested this LS4 intake manifold so I finally had one of the viewers send me one which was awesome we were able to get it all hooked up and I compared it to the truck manifold because for me that really is the most common LS manifold when I go to a wrecking yard and I find an LS in the wrecking yard, it's going to be in a truck. Very rarely have I ever seen a Camaro or a Corvette there in the wrecking yard. There are, because GM sold let's, thousands of trucks for every one Camaro or Corvette that they sold. So there are a lot more of those. So that truck manifold, the early one, is the most common. And then occasionally we'll find the later stuff that has like the Trailblazer SS intake manifold, which that is also good. But I want to compare the LS4 to the truck manifold because that's just kind of a run-of-the-mill intake manifold. When I did the cathedral port shootout, I compared everything to the factory LS1 intake manifold, the early LS1, the OG one, because that was the least powerful of any factory intake manifold for the cathedral port that I'd ever tested until now, because I'm pretty sure that this LS4 is even, makes even less power. So let's get to our test motor. The test motor was actually a 5.7 liter. This was the uh, same combination that I used to compare the Truck Norris cam and the Sloppy Best cam, both of them which worked very well. We compared those both to the factory LM7 camshaft. If you want to take a look, those videos are up where we, where we have all of the data on what the best, Sloppy Best cam does, which again works very well, and that Truck Norris cam, very good for truck applications and stuff. So both of those are up. This was a 5.7. It was a 5.3 liter iron block. It was bored over uh, 3902. So we had forged pistons in it. It had a set of um, mast uh, or RHS CNC ported heads on it that were actually, I think, done by mast way back because these were very, very old heads. The um, the motor was configured, obviously, first with the truck intake manifold and factory truck throttle body. We had inch and three quarter long tube headers on it. We had a Holley HP management system. We had uh, 60 pound or 80 pound DECA injectors in it, stock rockers. And so it was a fairly mild combination, 5.7 with good heads on it. And then we had the, um, for this test, 
we had the uh, sloppy best cam in it. So it was a 595 lift. It was a 219, 225 degree duration and 111.5 degree LSA. The camshaft worked very well. and We ran a bunch of different uh, tests on that, as I said, but this was equipped with the stock truck intake manifold. And our combination produced 479 horsepower and 463 foot-pounds of torque. This is, again, this is with the truck intake manifold. And here's what happened when we put the uh, LS4 intake manifold on there. The LS4 intake manifold was actually configured, it was a four bolt throttle body flange where the truck manifold was a three bolt throttle body flange. It required a different intake or different throttle body. We used the throttle body off of the L67, the 3800 supercharged motor because it bolted right in place and it was size, it was the right size. So you want to size the throttle body for whatever the opening is. And, and this is the size throttle body that they use on that LS4 intake manifold. And as you can see, we, again, we ran the same air fuel and timing on these combinations and they responded the same way that they have to uh, those kinds of timings and air fuel changes, which means that they weren't terribly responsive to air fuel changes. This ran best at about 29 to 30 degrees of total timing out here at the power peak, but I was very surprised. So we went from 479 horsepower down to 421 horsepower. So this was a crazy drop in power and peak torque was way down as well. It was all the way down to 409 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, 409 I think was the most. Yeah, 409 foot-pounds of torque. And you can see that it was basically down everywhere. I mean, this was down so much that I thought that something was wrong. <laughs> we went out and we checked to make sure that all, we had eight holes. We even did a compression test. I wanted to make sure that there weren't any bad plugs or wires or anything. I even went back and we removed the LS4 intake manifold off and put the truck manifold back on and boom, the power came right back. So obviously this is very repeatable. I would actually like to test this again. I just want to make sure I just have never seen an intake manifold be this bad on any sort of LS application. But now let's take a look and I'll give you an idea, a comparison between some other intake manifolds that I tested to show you how much of a difference this really is. Like I said, we went from 479 horsepower down to 421 horsepower. So that's a big jump. Let's take a look at another combination. Okay, guys, okay, so we took a look at a comparison between the truck manifold, the early truck manifold, and the 5.3 liter LS4 intake. And so far, the LS4 intake manifold is the least powerful intake manifold I have ever tested on any LS application. We had a difference of 58 horsepower running a back-to-back -back test between the early truck intake manifold and the LS4. And I wanted to put that into perspective to you because I ran an intake manifold test that we were talking about on all the Cathedral Port stuff where we compared the factory LS1 intake manifold, which was the least powerful one to date before I tested the LS4 compared to everything else. So we use that LS1 because it was the least powerful combination and use that as the baseline to compare everything else to. So I'm going to show you how a truck manifold compares to the VAT manifold and then how a fast manifold compares to that too, just to give you an idea of what a 58 horsepower difference looks like on another application before I had tested the LS4 intake manifold. So this was a six liter. It was a, we tested this on a six liter. It was pretty healthy. <clears throat> it had a stock crank. It had Corolla rods and flat top pistons. It had the Comp 469 cam that we always that I ran on a lot of things. 617, 624 lift, 231, 247 degree duration, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We even had uh, limited travel lifters on it. <clears throat> this combination had Airflow Research LSX V2 230 heads on it, so good heads, 58 cc chambers. So we had fairly good compression on this thing. It had stock rockers. It had inch and seven eighths headers. It had. Um, a Holly HP and 75 uh, pound injectors on it. It also had the um, fast, or we had the variety of different intake manifolds on there. So here's what happened when we started out running that combination, that modified six liter combination with the factory LS1 intake manifold. The factory LS1 intake manifold produced 535 horsepower. So not too bad. I mean, 535 horsepower on a six liter, guys would be happy with that. But as we saw, that was a long way from where this combination really could be. So here's what happened when we put the truck manifold on it. 
So the truck manifold was better than the LS1. As I said, the LS1 was kind of low man on the totem pole before I tested that LS4 just recently. But the LS1 manifold, <clears throat> the truck manifold was up by about 15 horsepower. It was up to 549. The difference was as much as 20 horsepower elsewhere. But again, even though I thought the LS1 was the low man on the totem pole, comparing that to the truck was only 15 to 20 horsepower, not like the 58 horsepower difference that we saw with the LS4 intake manifold. So it just goes to show you how far off that LS4 is compared to even the truck manifold. And that was on a much milder application. So we'd see even less of a difference between these two if I tested it on that little 5.7 compared to this much healthier 6 liter. But I'll show you what it takes to get like a 50 or 60 horsepower power difference. And that's when we compared the LS1 intake manifold on this 6 liter to a fast LSXR, the 102 millimeter fast. And that picked up a lot of power compared to either the truck manifold or obviously the LS1. That brought peak power up to 591 horsepower. Um, so we picked up a lot of power going from 535 to 591. But that's the kind of power difference that I expect going from the LS1 to a big fast manifold. But that's the kind of difference that we saw going from the LS4 intake manifold to the truck. So it just goes to show you um, how far down in power that factory LS4 intake manifold on. And we did some speculation on it, and I'm not sure if this is the case. But we know that the LS4 intake manifold was designed, obviously, for fitment under the hood. It had to fit in that front-wheel drive application. But we also think that there might be a possibility that they also designed the intake manifold to limit power production in that front-wheel drive chassis, in that front-wheel drive chassis, to save the drivetrain. That transmission that they use, that front-wheel drive transmission that they use on, is not notorious <clears throat> for being very stout. It's not like it's a 4L80E or anything. So I'm wondering if they purposely designed that to limit power production or if it was just like a result of them having to package it and actually fit it in the front wheel drive application. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, here's the part where I tell you what have we learned today? Well, we learned the following thing. The factory LS4 front wheel drive 5.3 liter intake manifold is, it's official. It is the least powerful factory cathedral port intake manifold I have ever tested a dubious honor indeed. It makes less power even than the run-of-the-mill early truck manifold. And guess what? That's not a good thing. But if we look at this as an opportunity, that means front-wheel drive 5.3 liter LS owners upgrading an intake manifold on your combination should yield some good power, assuming there is an upgrade that still fits with the accessory drive and hood clearance. But here's the thing, if you upgrade that combination, you might have to think about upgrading the transmission. Armature Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.